Hello. So um, I'm going to chat about three things this morning. I'm going to chat about the restoration of an amazing house, uh, bathroom layouts and kitchen layouts, and just some information in relation to when you're buying a house or you're going to do an extension on the house that you understand the orientation of the home. So I'd like to thank Miele and DID Electric for inviting me here this morning. And I get to start off my presentation and so what we have here is I, I have uh, me looking very casual in the countryside um, and this is a house a friend of mine bought in 96 and they bought all of these buildings with 36 acres of land and they paid 360,000, which was basically 10,000 an acre. And the buildings were thrown in for nothing because they were a liability. And that's what interests me. So is there one before that now? Sorry, did we, we had a quick skip. So one of the things about a restoration is that uh, the state of these buildings were like this and a home like this is quite interesting because in fact the actual stonework of these buildings is perfect and you it's about replacing the roofs we have the old windows the pump so we did an inventory of the buildings that were there and then over time our client developed and restored these buildings, if we could have the next slide. And it took him 10 years from 96 to 2006. And that's the restoration of that building you just saw. You can see the old windows have been put back in here, put in a conservatory here, and this is the old house. So this was an old farmhouse and a quadrangle of buildings from the 19th century. And he's now restored these. So. This was the old schoolroom. You have the bell here, which was there to bring in the laborers from the fields. So this was a whole community uh, when this farm would have been in operation in the 19th century, and it had its own school here. This was the school mistress's bedroom upstairs. That was the hen house was over here. So from a historical point of view, it was just very interesting, but it was from, from my point of view, it was very interesting doing this restoration, particularly doing it over time. And what our client has is, you can see by the state that these buildings were in, this is now a five-story, sorry, a five-bedroom uh, home in, in this barn. This is a little gym, and you'll see the photograph of this when it's all done up. That's the old well which is still there. So you're looking into that corner again. There's the well. So it's a lovely restoration done over time. And really, uh, I'm doing a program. You can move on on these. You know, I'm doing a program which is about restoration. This is me and my Suzuki, 96. Funnily enough, I bought this car, it was three grand. And whatever way the taxes changed, four years later I sold it for um, 4,000. Because the whole tax system on cars had changed. It was quite bizarre. And uh, that's that bell again. And all the intervention that was modern was done on the outside of the quadrangle. So when you stand in the quadrangle, you don't know the changes that have taken place uh, to, the, to the buildings. And this is a before, and that's the after. So this building was in rag order. You can see all the dry rot, and it was about restoring this building. And very much the client was involved in doing the restoration. This is one of those living rooms, he's two, looking back out to the quadrangle, lovely and bright, quite traditional in, in its style, um, which they like. 
but a very modern uh, kitchen. I photographed this from the wrong side, I'm terribly sorry, because all their melee equipment is on this wall. So I'll, I'll get the photograph for the next uh, showing. Uh, they have a fabulous uh, agar. So I'm waiting for the melee agar to arrive because I think they're amazing to cook with. And they put in this fantastic little gym in what was the pigsty. So we're looking for um, new homes. There's another series of the Great Restoration Show coming, and we'd love you to uh, put in any old houses that you might be doing up because they're a real treat. And this is the front of this house, which was all covered with pebble dash. And you know, it's amazing when you strip these homes back, what beautiful houses you can create. In terms of, of um, Ireland, you know, you must understand the orientation of your home. So everybody's telephone has a, a compass on it. So find out where north, west, east and south are because an awful lot of the time people put their living rooms on the east or they don't capture the sunlight. So be aware of where the sun is, particularly if you're buying a new home. And, you know, when, you, when you're looking at where a house is in an estate, bring your compass and decide where the back garden of that house is going to be so that you're getting the sunlight in the afternoon and in the evening. For me, a garden facing east is the worst garden because while the sun is there in the morning, when you want it in the evening, it's not. And a garden that actually faces north isn't that bad because you get the westerly sun into it. So just be very aware of the orientation of your house if you're putting an extension on or you're rearranging the inside of your, your, your uh, home, that what you're looking for is you're trying to grab the light really in the West in terms of your living room and your kitchen and very much about how you can live inside and outdoors and we'll see that in the next slide where you know it is about grabbing that sunlight the relationship between outside and inside having no threshold so there's no steps here and the summer we've had if you've created space like this outside all of a sudden you get an additional room. So do think about light and the relationship of the inside to the outside. And in an awful lot of cases, there's opportunities in bathrooms to open up roofs to again grab, grab natural light into your bathrooms or into, into dressing rooms or into halls. An awful lot of the time when we go upstairs in our houses today, our halls are dark and there's an opportunity to introduce roof lights and grab natural light into our rooms. Ghastly television. I threw this in because I think, you know, what an amazing bathroom to, to create quite an industrial look. There are so many styles in, in bathrooms in layout there's no right style and I just like this because I have this very simple bench which has been converted into my wash hand basins fantastic shower and a real industrial look and today because we're all using um, heat pumps the way we heat our homes is very different so now we have underfloor heating and we've got rid of our radiators and you know, that allows the freedom of where we can place furniture in the room. I love this bathroom. I think, oh goodness, what a stunning room to arrive into. Salvaged floorboards, very simple panelling on the wall. And it's really bright and airy. And, you know, the style here is one of very much about simplicity. You can see the little wash hand basin here. And it's all made from salvaged materials, you know, so it's to be creative in your kitchen and, and how you interpret space. But the most important thing in a bathroom is to, if you can grab natural light into it.
this is a very simple bathroom at the other extreme. And for me, it's just too simple. And I'd love to have seen, you know, some paintings or some color in this room. So when you're using color, there's a real rule to it. So if you have busy walls, you have simple furniture and fittings. If you have busy furniture and fittings, you have very simple walls. And in that way, your home won't look cluttered. With regard to the kitchen, there's an absolute fundamental. There's a triangle between the oven and a hob, your fridge freezer, and your kitchen sink. And you must always think about that when you're laying out the kitchen. And I always get surprised how this arrangement in so many kitchens doesn't work because somebody puts an island unit in the middle and all of a sudden it's like walking around. And you'll see there's a couple of typical layouts of, of kitchens which show the triangle. So that's a typical U shape and I have my arrangement of triangles here, an L shape and similarly I have my triangle. And the simplicity of your kitchen is very important in terms of how it works. This arrangement is a linear kitchen. A lot of people would put the sink in the island unit or they'd put the hob. Personally, I think if you can avoid that, it's yeah. best because if you like, that's where you're going to be chatting with your friends, you're going to be, you know, sitting having yeah. dinner. And I always find looking into a sink, which is all that dirt and it just puts me off me dinner. Yeah, that's a bit of a fright. Imagine arriving home to that. So, one of the things about the kitchen is you're going to spend an awful lot of money. And you really shouldn't be too trendy. Because one day you'll come down in your pyjamas and you'll scream. And it'll all have to be put in the bin. So, I think a more simplistic approach or simple approach that gives you longevity. And if you want to add colour, you do that through the furniture that you might bring into your kitchen. And these are, this is a very simple kitchen, um, and it's about style. And in this particular house, it's about the relationship of the outside from your kitchen. An awful lot of time we get that wrong as well. We seem to don't have doors from our kitchen to the outside, and that's very important because you know, today we eat outside, we're going to have our tea, our coffee and chill out. So the relationship of how we get from the kitchen to the outside is very important. Oh, a fuzzy photo. Um, really what I wanted to show here is how you can have a kitchen that is part of your living space, but yet by the introduction of a very simple post arrangement, you get that separation. I like this kitchen because there's lovely materials. I've got granites, Belfast sink, love my little handles over here, and I have my splash of colour, which if one day I wake up and I go, I've had enough of that, I can just repaint it. So I can transform this space very easily. I have light fittings in the right place over my counter. So to me, this is a kitchen that works very well. Lovely light coming from the back and actually over the sink as well. So always think about your spaces and how you work and move in them. This to me is a real great little device. We all have those corners where we spend our lives with those kitchens in the corner that we can never get into the back of. And yet this space can be transformed by, if you like, putting in a larger unit. And it is just such a terrific storage space. Lovely one here where I've got a curved door. So I think that's a great solution in an awful lot of kitchens where we're looking for storage. It also, by putting in that unit, means you can remove overhead uh, cupboards. And again, in a kitchen, if you can limit the amount of overhead cupboards, it just creates a real sense of space. And this is a beautiful, crisp, modern 
kitchen, nice seating area here, lovely views out. And again, I've got that connection between the outside and the inside. I have my fridge here, my cooker, and my sink. So again, they understand how I'm going to work in that space in terms of equipment. And if I'm a cook, which I really enjoy, I just love having that space to myself in terms of not having other people cluttering uh, th that area. This works well because all of a sudden I've got big drawer units here and I have my delf actually uh, in those units. I, the dining room table is, is down here. So I've got access for my cups and my saucers. It's very easy, lovely light fitting over the counter. So that to me is, is a lovely, lovely kitchen, very simple. And this is a more traditional approach. Beautiful, warm country kitchen is the way I'd describe this. You have the aga in the center around the fireplace, lovely cupboards which are individual, and just very simple and nice detailing throughout this kitchen. Nice seating area. You know, I'd be very happy to walk in there now and have my dinner served up to me. I put this in not because of, of these island units are in because they don't work. So this island unit blocks, in fact, <coughs> going from the fridge to, to the, the sink. So, and it also just looks clumsy in the space. So if you're putting in an island unit, you need, really need to think about the space around it. Do I, can I walk and flow around the space? And what is the function? An awful lot of people put in bar stools, but in fact the dining room table is here. And I'm never quite sure why. Um, am I going to sit at the dining room table or do I sit at the bar counter? So you just need to all the time think how you're going to use space. There's a lovely simple kitchen. You know, beautiful drawers, lovely handles. You have a terrific contrast between the island unit, which is dark, and the actual kitchen, which is very simple in a white. And that contrast works very well. Beautiful materials, like look at that sheet of marble. Amazingly, today you can get that marble, it'll be man-made and is lovely to touch because it doesn't have the same coldness as the marble does and I have the connection from the inside to the outside you can go on and I have lovely lighting here over the correct location over my big counter and equipment is just so important because um, it makes the kitchen it makes the simplicity of the kitchen and I liked this because this is a real architectural statement, but also the arrangement of the equipment works exceptionally well. Where I've got my fridge over here, I have my oven hobs and steam ovens, and my, my microwave. I have this lovely hob, and I chose this because I like the arrangement of this hob. It's narrower than usual and longer. And from point of view of being able to put pots and pans down, it really works well. And this Miele uh, dishwasher is fantastic. This unit up here, you can put all your, um, all your silver, all your, your um, what do you put silver in the dishwasher, by the way? Uh, you put all your knives and forks. It's a fabulous um, dishwasher. Uh, a friend of mine has one of these and it's just great to fill, it's so simple and works really well. The nice thing about their dishwasher is they actually have it here, up at a high level. Instead of having to grapple down at a low level, they've put it up at a high level and that works fantastically. And again, you know, these are beautiful fittings. The, New melee range is terrific, very simple to use, 
um, and integrate so well within a kitchen. And I love this kitchen. I think the finishes on this kitchen are great. And you can see the contrast in color between the back wall, which is like a big wardrobe, and the island unit, which is in a different color, a lovely bit of gold at the edge, and this very thin countertop, which makes the whole thing just look so elegant. And here's a great unit. This is actually the extract. So all of a sudden you can have the hob in the middle of the island and you don't have that big extract hood on top of it. These work really efficiently. And again, you know, it's about attention to detail. And if you look at this from the point of view of, uh, of, of an installation, really it's just beautiful very functional and has a full range of different types of cooking which I really like so you can change this you can they're in modular sections so you can change them around which really works very efficiently but I adore the actual extract here and this is great look we can go off now and we can sketch on our fridge, have a bit of fun, don't worry about it because you can wash it down. And it's, it's a very simple idea, but most of all, you know, when I think about this, when I look at this, is I just want to get in there and cook. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions or anything, please come up and have a chat with me. So thank you.